so guys i am a verified educator on an online learning platform called on academy right where i am making courses for gate examination both in hindi and english right so you can download the on academy learning app search my name over there act and follow me on that particular platform for awesome videos on the gate chemistry examination Hey guys, so very warm welcome to the Midnight Course on Statistical Thermodynamics or Mechanics. Now before I start, I want to point out two things. First of all, uh, I have not taken partition functions into consideration because over there you just need to use the formulas. So don't worry about that. This particular part requires conceptual understanding. That's why I have taken this into consideration. When I upload the PDF or the cheat sheet over there, you will find the formulas for the partition function. Secondly, Statistical Mechanics is a very interesting topic, but I understand right now you don't need the theory behind it. You don't need the story behind it you just need the formulas for the exam but trust me it's a very interesting topic like for example why does a cup of hot tea does not get even hotter when it has both the options to get hot or cold right so this all i'm going to discuss after the exam and i know right now you just need the formula and how to find the answers to the particular questions right so without wasting any time let's begin now first of all what is a micro canonical assemble micro canonical assemble is basically it's a it's a particular system uh, which has constant n v and e where n is the number of particles v is the volume and e is the energy so basically it's a system where your number of particles your volume of the system and the energy remains constant right so you can think of micro canonical system as an isolated system why am i telling you all this because in the gate exam it was asked that what are the three constants for a micro canonical assemble right now talking about a canonical assemble in a canonical assemble your your nvt is constant that means over here your number of particles your volume and your temperature is constant so it's like keeping a closed system in a heat bath right so the energy is exchanging but the temperature is remaining constant right so it's an isothermal system and this is a canonical assemble then we come onto a grand canonical assemble where your chemical potential your volume and your temperature is constant that means it's like a closed open system where the number of particles are basically the particles are also exchanging right the number of particles are not constant right and then there is another system which is your isothermal isobaric system for which your p v and t that is your pressure volume and temperature all three are constant right so if i if i talk about a general system our day to day system so our day to day systems are like canonical assemble right where your temperature is constant your volume is constant and your number of particles is constant like right like your thermos or your tiffin right so mostly the temperature remains constant for a very long time and the volume is also constant and the number of particles are also constant right so this is the most relatable concept to our day to day lives right now okay so entropy entropy according to boltzmann it is written on his engraved on his grave also the formula is k l n w where k is the boltzmann constant ln is the natural log and this w is your my number of microstates so there are different formulas to calculate number of microstates of which i have already made a video you can see over here but still for a reference i have written down the formulas so if a term symbol is given to you which is denoted by 2s plus 1 lj the, the microstates the number of microstates is equal to 2j plus 1 now for example if a term is given to you then the formula becomes 2s plus 1 into 2l plus 1 in detail i have mentioned in the video so you can go ahead and watch that this is a crash course so it will go according and for electronic configuration the formula becomes n factorial upon r factorial into n minus r factorial where n is the total number of occupancies so for a p orbital there are six electrons that can be occupied so n will be six and r is the number of electrons that have been occupied so there are two electrons that are present in the uh, p orbital in this particular case so two electrons so r r will be equal to 2 right so accordingly you can use the formula to calculate the number of microstates now the other formula which no one will tell you is equal to r ln w this is the formula for molar uh, entropy right for molar entropy means one mole so this formula k ln w is for one particle this is for one particle so if i am taking molar entropy that means for one mole so this becomes avogadro number into k and what is avogadro number into k it is equal to gas constant which is r that's why the formula becomes r ln w all right next is microstates for a classically distinguishable system or it's also called as a boltzmann maxwell boltzmann system for classic classically distinguishable particles so it's considered that classical particles are always distinguishable right it is considered that classical particles are always distinguishable but anyway n is the total number of particles and ni over here is basically the energy systems like there could be more than 
two three energy systems so number of particles in a particular energy system so let's say there are three energy systems where two three and four particles are there so the formula will become so total number of particles becomes two three and four so four plus three plus two that becomes nine particles so nine factorial upon two factorial three factorial four factorial right got it we'll do one particular question that was asked in the net so that you are familiar with this formula so the question was that there are total number of five electrons and you have to find the number of ways those five electrons can be arranged so that three are upspin and two are downspin okay three are upspin and two are downspin so let's say upspin and downspin are two different energy levels upspin and downspin are two different energy levels and the total number of particles are five so the formula becomes five factorial upon now let's say upspin is one system and total number of electrons that are upspin is two. So since there are two electrons, so it becomes two factorial into number of electrons which are downspin. So how many electrons are downspin that was given in the question? This is a question from CSI net. Three are downspin. So into three, three uh, particles are downspin. So this is the formula. So this becomes five into four and three factorial, three factorial cancels out into two so this becomes answer comes out to be equal to 10 so the answer for this particular question was 10 right this is how you have to use it in case for a particular energy level degeneracy is given right for example the energy of the ground the, the degeneracy for the first excited state is given to be 3 so then this formula comes into the picture n factorial into g i n i upon n i factorial again we'll do a particular question through which this formula will become clear but over here the g term comes into the picture which tells you the degeneracy of the system right and degeneracy of the system to the power total number of particles upon total number of particles factorial all right we'll talk about this then comes Bose-Einstein statistics. So according to the Bose-Einstein statistics, all particles are indistinguishable. Okay, in Bose-Einstein statistics, all particles are indistinguishable. So remember for Fermi direct statistics and Bose-Einstein statistics, the particles remain indistinguishable, right? You cannot distinguish the particles. Whereas for classical system, the particles remain distinguishable. So this is a very big difference between these three systems. These two systems have indistinguishable particles and classical system has distinguishable particles, right? Now, your Bose-Einstein statistics, the formula for microstates is uh, G plus N minus one, right? G plus N minus one, where N is the total number of particles, G is the degeneracy of a particular energy state upon G minus one N factorial. So this is the basic formula that you have to use. Similarly, for the Fermi direct statistics, which is considered for fermions, Bose, uh, sorry, Bose-Einstein statistics is considered for bosons and bosons are integral spin, okay, integral spin particles, whereas fermions are half integral spins, that is, those have half integral spins, like for example, your electrons, your neutrons, or your protons, in fact, and all other nucleus which have in half integral spin right for th them your fermi direct statistics comes into the picture and whichever have integral spins like one two three four five like so on and so forth they are considered in the bose einstein statistics all right and the formula for fermi direct statistics is g, g factorial that is the degeneracy factorial upon g minus n that means degeneracy minus total number of particles into the n factorial this is the formula for fermi direct statistics right in case there are more than one particles or more than one energy level then you just write over here gi and ni right that's it that's the only difference so over here you write gi ni right uh, and uh, again in in the uh, in the cheat sheet it will become more clear as to what i want to say now let's talk about some questions it's already a 10 minute long video so we'll quickly talk about the questions which are very important right so um You'll see the questions down uh, like somewhere over here. You'll see the questions right now. The first question that I want to take is actually the most toughest question, which nobody will explain. And it's a really good question. It took me five to six hours to actually uh, study statistical mechanics in detail so that I can tell you the answer to each and every question conceptually. Right. So this is a very interesting question. And I know that there is no explanation given in any kind of uh, coaching material or book or some anywhere else right so the question is that uh, you can see over here so there, there are three particles with us and uh, the energy levels that we have is let's say zero okay we have three energy levels zero e and two e right 
and we have a classical particle which, for, which are distinguishable then we have fermions and we have bosons so spin half means fermions and spin zero means your bosons right so we have bosons fermions and classic classically distinguishable particles and it says which will have the highest entropy so the one which will have the highest entropy is basically the one which will have the highest number of microstates because entropy is directly proportional to microstates so now we have to see how we can have different uh, amount of microstates now it's given that the total energy that the particles should possess these three particles together put together should possess an energy of 4e they should possess a total energy of 4e all right now so how can this uh, how let's talk about your classically distinguishable particles so let's say since they are distinguishable so each particle can be named a b and c right each particle can be named a b and c so let's label the particles a b and c and we need total energy 4e right so how can we have a total energy of 4e either a and b occupy second energy level so two right so 2e plus 2e becomes 4e and the third particle occupies this zero energy level right this is one possible uh, scenario the second possible scenario is that a and c occupy a second energy level and b occupies your ground energy level right because they are distinguishable particles the third scenario is that b and c occupy second energy levels and your your a occupies zero energy level so these are three possibilities are there any other possibilities yes the same thing you can take over here okay and instead of writing this a b a c b c you write over here a b a b a c b c right uh, and your c b a goes over here so these are another three possibilities right where your second energy level is occupied by one particle either c and then the first energy level with one energy is occupied by ab then b occupies second energy ac occupy the first energy level and then a occupies the second energy and bc occupy your uh, second energy level so these are the three possibilities so total po possibilities or total number of microstates for a classically distinguishable particle becomes equal to six right total number of microstates for a classically distinguishable particle becomes equal to six so for classically distinguishable particles it becomes equal to six now let's talk about fermions or first talk about bosons now one important thing i did not tell you is that bosons can have any number of states okay any number of particles or any number of bosons can occupy any number of states all right because this is again quantum mechanics i can easily explain but since it's a crash course video i'm not going to explain bosons are symmetric whereas fermions are anti-symmetric right so like electrons or you can say to fermions your Pauli's exclusion principle comes into the picture that means they cannot exist in the same state two bosons can exist in the same state but two fermions cannot exist in the same state boson one boson or un, infinite bosons can have one particular state but fermion each fermion can have only one particular state so to bosons your Pauli exclusion principle does not apply but to your fermions your Pauli's exclusion principle does apply right okay so uh, let's talk about bosons now bosons are indistinguishable that means between the three particles you cannot distinguish which particle is which so either two particles occupy second energy level and one occupies zero or the other possibility is that uh, two particles occupy your energy level one and one occupies your 2e this is the only possible uh, these are the only two possible microstates first case is this and the second case is this there is no other possibility right so the total number of microstates for bosons over here i'll write bosons is two right now let's talk about fermions now i told you fermions cannot have the same energy state your fermions cannot exist in the same energy state what does that mean is let's talk about electrons so if i am saying one electron is over here like this right the other electron has to be downspin it it cannot be upspin again it has to be downspin right so this is one possibility now this energy this over here this energy what what is the possibility that uh, sorry now it will be in ground state so now in the ground state either it can be upspin or it can be downspin so it has two possibilities right here there's no possibility both have to be upspin downspin because 
it though both cannot be upspin because of the Pauli's exclusion principle that applies to fermions. So now these are the two possibilities. All right. So these are the two possibilities. What other possibility we have? That two electrons occupy this energy level, or two fermions, let's say, occupy this energy level, and one fermion occupies this energy level. Now this can be upspin, or this can be downspin. So now there are four possibilities for fermions. So fermions over here I can write down has four possibilities. So the entropy for classically distinguishable particles will be the most followed by your fermions then your bosons. So the correct answer for this particular question is option number four. Right. So this is the most relevant uh, explanation I can give you for this particular question. Now there was another question for four marks in your December 2017 examination and that question is that the term is given the term symbol is in fact given as 3p2 and you have to find the residual entropy. So the residual entropy at 0 Kelvin, nothing but this particular question, you have to find the number of microstates, that's it. And you have to apply this formula. So uh, the microstates, the formula was 2j plus 1. If you apply the formula over here, the j value is equal to 2. So 2 into 2 plus 1, that is equal to 5. So S is equal to or residual entropy is equal to kln 5. 5 seconds and you solve this question for 4 marks right now let's quickly move on to a little trickier question which will explain something uh, which will explain this particular formula that I had taken now the question is um, that four distinguishable molecules are distributed in energy levels E1 and E2 right four distinguishable molecules so that means classical uh, we have to apply the Maxwell Boltzmann formulas so um, there are four particles with energy E1 and E2 okay and E1 has degeneracy equal to 2. So E1 has degeneracy equal to 2 and E2 has degeneracy equal to 3. So E2 has degeneracy equal to 3 and it's given that three molecules occupy energy E1. So three molecules occupy energy E1. So three molecules are over here and one molecule occupies energy this. So what is the answer for this? You have to find the number of microstates, right? So the formula for number of microstates for classically distinguishable molecules is this and now the degeneracy is also given. So n factorial I told you is the total number of particles. So the total number of particles are 4. So we have in the formula, right? Sorry, I missed, I did not uh, write the Stirling equation. I'll again tell you what is Stirling equation. So 4 factorial into, now we have degeneracy for, let's talk about the first energy level. Degeneracy is equal to 2. So g value is equal to 2. And at that particular energy level, how many particles are there? 3. So Ni over here is degeneracy of that particular energy level is 3. Sorry, is 2. And the number of particles are 3. So 2 to the power 3 upon the total number of particles in that energy state, that is 3 factorial. Into, right? Into, because pi is there. Pi means into, you are multiplying all the values. So um, now the degeneracy is 3 for the second energy level. So the degeneracy is 3. And number of particles is 1, so two, two, 3 to the power 1 upon 1 factorial. So now if you try and solve this, um, 3 factorial you can write down as 3 into 2 into 1, right? So 3 and 3 gets cancelled. So we have 4 factorial, that is 4 into 3 uh, into, again, 2 and 2 also get cancelled over here because we have 2 over here. So 4, if we, if we expand 4 factorial, we cancel this out. So we are left with 4 into 3. And 2 also gets cancelled out with the, two fact, with the 2 factorial. So 4 into 3 into 8. So this is 24 to the 24 into 4 that comes out to be 96. So the correct answer for this question is 96. Right over here I had written down the Stirling formula. Sometimes maybe if you are doing the derivation it is important. The Stirling formula is equal to natural log of n factorial can be written as n log n minus n. Right, this is the formula. This is called Stirling's theorem. It is applicable when the n value is very large. So you can write down this as n log n minus n, right? So this is all about your statistical mechanics and I have finished this video in about 19, 20 minutes, right? So this was pretty long, uh, but I could not go any faster. I tried my best. So anyway, I hope you found this video useful. I might be in a hurry for some people, some, some people might, might not have gotten certain concepts. So in case you did not get those concepts, please tell me down in the comment section. I'll definitely make this video again a little slowly. Maybe I'll divide it into two or three parts in case you did not understand 
one particular aspect right so anyway i hope you found this video useful if you have haven't subscribed to my channel please do because i do put in a lot of efforts to help you guys simplify a lot of complicated topics right so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video